All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about is knife steel over height, or generally speaking, what is the validity, if any, if any to high quality or super steels? Because there's been a lot of uh, discussion and a lot of hype, especially here of, especially here of late, um, or especially as we progress in the knife community to chase after, you know, wildly high performing steels, something like, you know, CPM Rex 45, like this guy, or maybe even, you know, other steels like CPM Crewwear, as you see in the Benchmade Adamus lineup. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, kind of push towards running higher and higher quality steels. And ultimately, I think what that comes back to is what validity is there, if any, in the actual performance of those super steels and do you really need them? So I think for me to answer this question in a TLDR kind of fashion, um, ultimately are, you know, blade steels overhyped? I think primarily for 99% of applications, yes. And that is because even for hard use applications, most of the time, things like D2 tool steel, 5160 um, spring steel, even 1095 are going to be more than adequate for most people. I would say at least 80% of circumstances, those more basic tool and spring steels are going to have perfectly fine edge retention, um, good resharpenability, and pretty okay, you know, albeit maybe not the best corrosion resistance. And I think that's probably the biggest sticking point with most steels is corrosion resistance, because in a good portion of the world, including especially uh, Alaskan winters, you know, there is a great deal of precipitation and overall um, baseline humidity. So as far as it goes, like most of the time, what you really will notice with high performance performance steels, unless you are, you know, apples to apples comparison, comparing them, what you're really going to notice more than anything is corrosion resistance in practical use. Now, with that being said, you know, the reason why I'm holding or, you know, um, playing with this Emerson, this is actually a mini commander, um, is because Emerson's, even including this one, this is an older 2009 model, but Emerson's as a whole um, have traditionally always been made out of 154 cm, which I think nowadays a lot of us would look at and see that as a probably not budget steel, but a lower quality steel, especially in comparison to something like CPM Rex 45 or even CPM 154, which is the um, powdered metal version of 154 cm. So by and large, you know, 154 cm is no longer really a you know leader of steels. It's no longer really a good um, steel in most people's mind. But that being said, you know, why does Emerson still use it? Well, part of it is that Emerson is very stuck in their ways and they really do not, you know, they have their formula and they don't believe in changing it. So for them, if it's not broke, they aren't going to fix it. So that's part of the reason why for Emerson personally, but in all reality, there is a lot of credence to continuing to use 154 CM. Now, some of the reasons why I would say 154 and other steels like ABL, and D2 tool steel 1095, you know, these aforementioned steels are really good steels to continue to use is number one price point. Most of these steels like AEBL, 154 CM, uh, 5160 are going to be very um, affordable steels, especially if you are a knife maker, um, you're going to be able to make a product at a lower price that still has perfectly fine reasonable performance. I have ran knives in AEBL, of course, 154 CM, and the performance has always been perfectly acceptable in my books. I've never ran into issues with these steels where it simply would not work or, uh, you know, that it would break or have really any issues. Now, granted, you will have to sharpen 154 CM more often than something like Rex 45, but it is going to realistically do everything that you would need it to do on a daily basis. And you might have to sharpen it more frequently, but it's not going to fail you either. So like I said, cheapness is a really good reason to keep these steels. Now, unfortunately, Emerson kind of has their own name and they charge what they want for their knives. Uh, there's no longer really any dealers that supply Emerson. So if you do buy an Emerson, you either have to buy it off of the secondary market or direct from Emerson. So they're not the best example for affordability because these knives are still very expensive. But by and large, you know, you can, if a product is 
if a product can be offered for a lower price using those lesser steels, it is really not that bad of a deal. Uh, and functionally speaking, they work perfectly fine. Now, moving to another um, reason why these steels are perfectly fine is oftentimes, you know, these are much easier to sharpen. Now, CPM crew wear is actually pretty easy to sharpen, but things like CPM 20 CV, things like Rex 45, M390 are all great steels. They hold an edge really well, even CPM 3V, but they are a nightmare to sharpen. They are really not fun unless you have dedicated sharpening rigs like a Wicked Edge or an Edge Pro Apex. They are going to be be very tough and challenging steels to sharpen. Now, like I said, uh, crew wear and magna cut are a little bit different because they are easier to sharpen, but a lot of your high end or higher performing steels will be more difficult to upkeep for maintaining a sharper edge um, in the field, especially. So that is another uh, big pro or big win to these steels. Once again, too, um, some, some of like my own personal experience, especially with 154 CM, I do find that honestly, it's corrosion resistance is pretty darn good. Now, if you are exposing it to a lot of salt water or blood, there may be issues with corrosion, especially on models that are not coated. But 154 as a whole has been a steel that I have had really good success with, um, even with corrosion resistance, with fresh water, and and uh, just a humid or moist environments. So overall, I will say that I think with a lot of these steels like AEBL and a 154 CM, you know, they are older, older technologies, but really the performance is pretty much really by and large, the performance is definitely there. So I really uh, enjoy using them. And once again, if they can be brought in for a lower price, they are pretty darn good. Now, as far as, like I said, especially everyday carry applications, realistically, even your lower quality steels like 420 HC and stuff are going to be more than acceptable. Most of the times when we're using our knives in everyday carry situations is non-emergent, non-urgent times, and you will have time to maintain and take care of your blades. At least if you are a knife aficionado or a knife nut, you know, you're going to be able to take care of these knives just fine. So do you really need the super performance of these super steels? Not necessarily. I mean, it does make it a little bit easier. You know, you don't really have to worry about maintaining your edges that much, but, um, you know, there really isn't much validity or need to, uh, you know, I mean, there isn't really much need or a pressing need to maintain them. Now, I will say I've made some arguments leaning towards um, older steels and towards these older knives or older, you know, steel wear bearing knives. But one of the big things that I will say, and I think the primary reason why um, knife steels have progressed so much, especially here of late, is competition. And that is, once again, especially when we take this, you know, Emerson uh, Minicom and put it up against this um, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 um, out of box, or I should say like MSRP. Now, granted, both of these do have resale values that are usually a little bit higher. So honestly, they're both pretty comparable in price. They're both around $250. So when you look at this, you know, you can get a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 with CPM Rex 45 steel, or you could get a an Emerson Mini Commander um, with 154 CM steel, both for about $250, maybe 230, maybe 220, you know, if you're lucky. But honestly, both are about 250 bucks. Now, like I said, this is 154 CM. This is CPM Rex 45. So you are getting a much better performing super steel for the same price. And so this is where things begin to get a little bit more murky because back in the good old days uh, of knives, like in the early 2000s, uh, early 2010s, you know, the more expensive knives simply featured more premium steel. And in order to stay competitive, companies, you know, would offer something like this. And then another company like Benchmade would come along and offer, you know, a mini Adamus like this in um, CPM crew wear and it's around $225, right? So, you know, um, as we're seeing like nowadays, knife companies are competing and what 
is a part of the value proposition for buying a new knife is, you know, better steels. You can upgrade your tool by upgrading its steel, you know, by buying that new knife. And so if we were to just stay with D2 154 CM and those kinds of older steels, there would really be no reason to trade in something like an Emerson um, for a newer knife. And uh, ultimately, you know, like I said, the price so there'd be no reason to trade it in for a newer knife. So I guess ultimately what I'm trying to say is that newer knives are trying to gun for those prices, those same price ranges as those older knives, but with upgraded steels, upgraded performance, and you know, just becoming a newer, better thing. So ultimately competition has dropped the price of these knives or these steels and made it more attainable to get super steels at lower prices. And that is probably the biggest pro to um, these newer knives with their newer steels because oftentimes once again these knives are coming in at around the same price as those older knives with their older steel now once again this isn't always a you know clear-cut path <clears throat> now once again this isn't always a clear-cut thing uh, obviously you can find good discounts on emerson's and say you find an emerson like this for around 120 dollars well i think it's pretty obvious that that is definitely a much more reasonable uh, offer for 154 cm out of something like an emerson so you know there are if you find good deals it can kind of erode this but if you are buying msrp for these knives um, definitely going with better or improved blade steels is a solid idea so ultimately i do think that knife steel is really overhyped in my opinion i think a lot of people you know really try to hype up that knife steel like oh you know do you have magna cut do you have you know cpm crew wear do you have all of these new cool steels cpm 20 cv and ultimately at the end of the day you know, there's not much of, there's not many people that would genuinely find a noticeable performance increase in the steel. But at the same time, too, if it comes down to paying the same price for improved steel, improved performance, it does make more sense to go towards those options. So yes, while I will say I do think uh, steel is overhyped, I do think that it is reasonable as well. All right, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.